how are you feeling having seen this landmark <laughs> image for the first time? Well, you can tell I can't get the grin off my face. I kind of feel like I want to jump out of my own skin. It's, um, of course, just even more beautiful than we could have imagined. So what, we're going to bring up some of the images of this now and feel free to talk to us. What are some of the key features of this? So what we're seeing is what's called a foreground galaxy cluster. And so you can see that very bright node in the very center there. That's a, a group of galaxies. And there's so much mass contained in that, close, in, in that cluster that it's bending space time around it. And you can see these gorgeous arcs or smears of red around it. And these are galaxies that are actually behind the cluster, that their light has been bent so that we can see them. Now, what's special about the JWST version of this is that we're seeing wavelengths of this redder light than even Hubble couldn't see. So we're actually seeing even fainter, more distant galaxies um, than we're, we were able to image before. And clusters, it's such a brilliant target um, because it, it really kind of lets us cheat a little bit and see things which are so distant we wouldn't be able to see them um, even with JWST's amazing ability. Now here you're seeing some really red galaxies. I'm getting excited. Now some of these are gonna be extremely distant and they probably existed, their light reached us is coming from uh, billions of years ago. So when the, the universe was maybe only a few billion years old, it's now almost 14 billion years old. And this right, this really bright red galaxy kind of to the uh, right, now that could be a bright, dusty galaxy. And so we have this degeneracy where things might be old, but they could also be very dusty from a lot of star formation. So JWST is gonna be able to help us identify these really important galaxies that help us understand how galaxies form Form stars and grow over time. So that red light can be very old stars and it could also be from a lot of dust from very active star formation. And, so it's and, a really important and, process. And so I'm probably going to ask a few dumb questions here, so forgive me, but, but how okay. uh, the, the light has traveled to us over a long period of time. So is it the case that some of these galaxies might, might not exist anymore or might look very different now? to what we're seeing considering this has taken so long for, for the light to get to us. That's right. So what we're seeing is, is especially see this galaxy here that's kind of in the, the bottom center that looks like a red, kind of a red streak. Now that is probably a very distant galaxy that's very dusty and forming a lot of stars and we're seeing its light as it would have been probably when the universe was only a few billion years old. And so that's incredible because now it might look much like our Milky Way galaxy okay. does. It might have formed a lot of its stars. Yeah. Okay, and now I think we can bring up a shot of the Hubble telescope image. So this was the landmark image from 20 years ago and uh, so this, what we're seeing now is a significant yeah. advance on that, obviously. Explain yes. what, what has advanced over that time. And I think du during your answer, we might be able to bring up a shot of them side by side. Yeah, look, fantastic. So Hubble, still groundbreaking, phenomenal. Um, this image that we're seeing, you know, it would have taken much longer to get the kind of what we call depth. So the amount of light that's captured from those faint distant sources, but also the type of light. So the, the redder wavelengths, there's just a limit to what Hubble could see compared to JWST. So it's still a fantastic image that, that provides a lot of detail. But as you can see here with the JWST comparison in a much shorter amount of time because the telescope is bigger and can see redder wavelengths. So we're seeing what we call higher resolution. So more of that detailed, what we call galaxy morphology of the real shapes of galaxies. And we're detecting light, like you see this bright red blob here. Um, it's very scientific terminology. <laughs> um, so that is just something that Hubble just wasn't able to see. So it's about the depth and the detail, but also just these wavelengths. Um, and, and so that translates to information about the stars, about the chemicals that are, that are going on in these galaxies. And the description of this new image, is, which is the one on the left that we're seeing here, Hubble is the one on the right. right, is that the, the new image is as the deepest we've seen into space. How deep were we looking into space with the Hubble image compared to this image that's just been released this morning? So with the Hubble image, the deepest that we're probably able to see is galaxies that were 
um, <laughs> formed or the light from galaxies when the universe was probably about a billion years old, that would be the very furthest that we could see. And I imagine JWST will, will have pushed beyond that and we'll see. And it's a bit challenging because the scale when we're talking about things like redshift. So that's how far away, you know, the light is and what time it is in the universe. And so I, I would imagine that this JWST image, once we get a little bit more information, so we're seeing the light and we have to break that, that up a little bit to really understand what we call the spectrum. And that tells us the exact kind of distance and time um, that that galaxy exists. But we're going to be able to probably step back at least, uh, you know, I would say uh, to to before the, the billion year mark. So the, the key here is the very first galaxies. Are we going to is some of this light going to be from the very first galaxies um, that that were formed in our universe and in their different ages? So are we going to see young star form what we call young, very star forming galaxies? Are we also going to capture some of the most mature, mature? So galaxies that have already formed, like you see here, maybe the bulk of their stars um, and already in the very early universe. And those are going to be those very tight, tiny little faint smudges that you see. This galaxy here is probably um, much closer. Um, and again, these ones that you see here, the, the very bright, fuzzy red blobs, those are the ones um, that we're the most interested in because they're probably seeing one galaxy that before maybe wasn't resolved. It was one small patch of light. And now we're actually seeing more of that structure. And so for somebody like me that cares about the sizes of galaxies, well, we've just revealed a whole other part of their um, structure, which is so important for understanding how they gain mass and grow over time. And Rebecca, this is just a tiny speck in the sky, this image that we've got. You, you've obviously understood for a long time that there's a whole lot out there, but seeing this image today, does that kind of expand even your, your mind about just how much is out there? Yes, look, I'll be honest, when it, when uh, they were doing the press release, I was like, just get to the picture. And I was like this close to the to the frame, just trying to make out all of the detail. But even in this teeny tiny little um, element, like you said, we're seeing these gorgeous streaks um, from the cluster's gravity um, in detail like never before. So just the amount of science that we can get from something that's literally the size of a grain of sand on the sky, um, that tells you just how how deep how much we're, we're getting back in time um, and that it's just a rich image because the cluster the physics there we're going to get to learn about dark matter we're going to get to learn about galaxy evolution and so there's so much that's just packed into one tiny element so you imagine um, as JWST looks at different parts of the sky, that that just is going to, um, an exponential scale, really improve our knowledge of the cosmos. Yeah, so many more Im images to come, huh? and we'll get another round of them within the next 24 hours. That's right. So this is, you know, as a galaxy uh, person, I love seeing this image. But what JWST is also going to be able to reveal is where stars are born. So light that has been hidden from us um, and, and hidden from us at a specific kind of resolution. So we'll be able to see things more clearly that were hidden from view. And then we'll also be able to see the spectrum of planets that exist outside of our solar system. And, and as was alluded to before, potentially to see if they have have water. So uh, just incredible. It's not just about galaxies. Um, we are going to get to see, to really learn more about how stars are formed and even looking at greater detail planets um, that just aren't our, you know, wonderful solar system planets. Okay. It's been so cool to chat to you, Rebecca, and feel your energy, energy about this as well. And I love that you describe Absolutely. yourself as a galaxy person as well as an <laughs> astronomer. Catch you later. That's right. Cheers. Thanks so much.